Drishti IAS is pleased to revise its special program, Mastering Mains Answer Writing, targeting answer writing in UPSC and State Services Main Examination. We will be alternatively covering GS Papers 1, 2 and 3 through this program. For GS Paper 4, please watch our program, Ethics, Definitions and Concepts. The link for it is mentioned in the description below. So what is the structure of the program? We begin by looking at a question, then narrow it down to the syllabus and assess the weightage of the topic. Then we learn on how to approach the question, structure the answer and then write the actual answer. We finally conclude the episode by looking at questions asked in the previous year examinations. Let us see the question which we will be discussing today. What do you understand by the Uniform Civil Code? Examine its relevance for a secular country like India and the challenges in its implementation. The question can be narrowed down to Indian constitution that is part of GS Paper 2. The importance of the topic over the years can be assessed from the graph display. Shifting towards how to approach the question. In general, there are two things we must understand with respect to a question. A. The underlying theme of the question and B. What is or are are being asked about the theme. Now, let us look at the question again. What do you understand by the Uniform Civil Code? Examine its relevance for a secular country like India and the challenges in its implementation. The underlying theme of the question is Uniform Civil Code in India. About this theme, we have to discuss the relevance and the challenges in the implementation of the Uniform Civil Code. To answer the given question, let us first understand the meaning of the command word examine. Examine simply means to analyze the question by giving reason facts and issues surrounding the topic. Moving towards how to structure the answer. The first part of the answer will be the introduction of the answer which will include a brief description of Uniform Civil Code. The second part of the answer that is the body includes relevance of UCC for a secular country like India and challenges in the implementation of Uniform Civil Code. Lastly, in our conclusion, we will suggest some measures to achieve the objective of Uniform Civil Code. Now we try to write the actual answer. But before we commence, we would like to make it clear that the answer provided here is a representative answer, that is how the actual answer may look like. It can be adapted or modified as per your own natural style of writing, whether paragraph form or short sentences or bullets or diagrams. We have also taken certain liberties with the word limit by including certain additional information in the answer for your comprehensive understanding. Without much ado, let us write. A uniform civil code means that all sections of the society, irrespective of their religion, shall be treated equally. It shall cover areas like marriage, divorce, maintenance, inheritance, adoption and succession of the property. It is based on the premise that there is no connection between religion and law in modern civilization. Now we shift towards the body part of the answer. Relevance of Uniform Civil Code for a secular country like India. Spirit of Secularism a secular republic needs a common law for all citizens rather than differentiated rules based on religious practices. Ensuring gender justice. The rights of women are usually limited under religious law, be it Hindu or Muslim personal laws. The practice of instant triple talaq is a classical example. Adhering to constitutional vision. Many practices governed by religious traditions are at odds with the fundamental rights guaranteed in the Indian constitution. Hence, constitutional principles of equality, liberty, justice can only be achieved under a uniform civil code. The Supreme Court has repeatedly directed the parliament to implement uniform civil code through its judgments in the Shah Bano case of 1985, Sarla Mudgal case of 1995, and more recently it argued that Portuguese civil code of 1867 in Goa is a shining example and should be a model for the entire country. Now we move on to the challenges in its implementation. 
difficulty in formation of common laws. The task of actually devising a set of rules that will govern all communities is difficult considering the vast range of interests and sentiments to be accounted for. Plurality of Indian Society India is a diverse country with people belonging to different communities, cultures and religions. Cultural diversity cannot be compromised for the sake of uniformity. Politicization of the issue Attempts to arrive at uniform civil code is perceived as imposition of majoritarian views on a certain section of minorities. Non-justifiable nature of DPSPs Uniform Civil Code is mentioned in Article 44, Part 4A, Directive Principles of State Policy, which states that the state shall endeavour to secure for the citizens a uniform civil code throughout the territory of India. Directive Principles of State Policy are only guidelines which can be implemented as per time and situation. The Uniform Civil Code will also impact the fundamental right to practice religion enshrined in Article 25 of the Constitution. And now we shift to the last part of our answer, that is the conclusion. As recommended by the Law Commission in its consultation paper of 2018, Uniform Civil Code is neither necessary nor desirable at this stage. The Commission stresses on efforts to reconcile with the country's diversity with universal arguments on human rights. There is a need for the codification of all personal laws so that prejudices and stereotypes in every one of them would come to light and can be tested on the anvil of fundamental rights of the constitution. Codification could help arrive at certain universal principles which may facilitate prioritizing equity rather than imposition of a uniform code. Now we look at the questions asked in the previous year examinations. In 2019, the following question was asked. Do you think the constitution of India does not accept the principle of strict separation of powers rather? It is based on the principle of checks and balance. Explain. In 2018, the following question was asked. Whether the National Commission for Scheduled Caste can enforce the implementation of constitutional reservation for the scheduled caste and the religious minority institutions. In 2017, the following questions were asked. Explain the salient features of the Constitution 100 and First Amendment Act of 2016. Do you think it is efficacious enough to remove the cascading effect of taxes and provide for a more common national market for goods and services? The Indian Constitution has provisions for holding joint sessions of the two houses of the Parliament enumerate the occasions when this would normally happen and also the occasions when it cannot, with reasons thereof. In 2016, the following questions were asked. Discuss the essentials of the 69th Constitutional Amendment Act and anomalies, if any, that have led to recent reported conflicts between the elected representatives and the institution of the Lieutenant Governor in the administration of Delhi. Do you think that this will give rise to a new trend in the functioning of the Indian federal politics? To what extent is Article 370 of the Indian Constitution bearing marginal note temporary provision with respect to the state of Jammu and Kashmir temporary? Discuss the future prospects of this provision in the context of Indian polity. Discuss each adjective attached to the word republic in the preamble. Are they defendable in the present circumstances? In 2015, the following question was asked. Does the right to clean the environment entail legal regulations on burning crackers during Diwali? Discuss in the light of Article 21 of the Indian Constitution and judgments of the Apex Court in this regard. In 2014, the following question was asked. Though the federal principle is dominant in our constitution, and that principle is one of its basic features, it was equally true that federalism under the Indian constitution leans in favour of a strong centre, a feature that militates against the concept of strong federalism. What do you understand by the concept freedom of speech and expression? Does it cover hate speech also? 
Why do the films in India stand on a slightly different plane from other forms of expression? Discuss. In 2013, the following questions were asked. Discuss Section 66A of IT Act with reference to its alleged violation of Article 19 of the Constitution. Constitutional mechanisms to resolve the interstate water disputes have failed to address and solve the problems. Is the failure due to structural or process inadequacy or both? Discuss. With this, we conclude today's episode of Mastering Main's Answer Writing. Until next time, stay safe. Thank you. To watch our videos in Hindi, subscribe to our Hindi YouTube channel, Drishti IAS.